Ronnie, how are you today, Pat? Okay, uh, things I, good? I feel great, and, and I'm humbled that he had to look down to see my name. But that's all right. Uh, Carlos Mendoza, it'll be fun watching him manage. Well, let's start there. Sure. Uh, you know, first-time managers with the Mets. You played under Davey, and he was the last first-timer who won. You know, Rojas, Callaway, not as successful. What's your take on him making that little trip from Yankee land, not being a manager before? You know, the Met job's a tricky job in New York. You know that better than anybody. How about that transition? Let's start with that. Well, it, it has been a tricky job. When you think about it, Chris, there's been a lot of managers uh, since Terry Collins uh, that have had that opportunity to kind of kind of cement themselves in, in that spot, and it hasn't uh, uh, been. Uh, I think when you think of Mendoza, you think, boy, there's no place where there's more of a microscope on coaches and a manager uh, than New York. And to watch Aaron Boone do his thing with the Yankees, I think, can only help. And everyone that I've talked to about Carlos has nothing but great things to say. That's not uh, always the point uh, uh, in baseball. Usually you can find someone who doesn't uh, uh, like him or like someone else. But it'll be fun. And for you and I, his nickname's Mendy. He'll maybe he has a chance to be the most famous Mendy since Mendy Rudolph. Yeah, here you go. And one of the great all-time referees there as far as the National Basketball Association is concerned. Listen, they can say they're sort of in a reboot scenario and maybe they're looking at 2025. I don't pay too much attention to that. Diamondbacks won 84, 84 games. They got the game uh, into the World Series. If the Mets, you know, they had a lot of play. Lindor, Alonzo. Alonzo will never leave here. I'd be shocked if he ever left. Obviously, Nimmo, uh, you know, Senga. Maybe they make a run at Yakamoto. If the Mets are competitive, you know, around middle of the year, they will do what they have to do to try to win in 2024. So some Met fans worried about next year being sort of a waste. I don't pay any attention. If they're good, the owner will spend some money. Let's discuss that. Uh, Go ahead. hundred percent, Chris, and you hit the nail on the head. It's not always how well you played over the six months. It's how well you're playing at the end of the year. We've seen that over and over with the Nationals in 19, uh, of course, with the Diamondbacks last year, and so on and so on. The 100-win teams are the ones that seem to be struggling when this tournament, and it really is a tournament in October, uh, starts. So, you know, if the Mets can get off to a little better start, not have the June like they had last year, you're right. They will be replenished uh, by their owner, Steve Cohen, to help that ball club. But, you know, they've got a lot of good players. They had a foundation of outstanding uh, players, I think, in Alonzo and Lindor and McNeil and others. Uh, so they, they have, you know, they have a chance, I would think, to be one of those teams uh, that ends up in the postseason. I talked, uh, I just thought of it here. 88, the Mets had a horrendous loss to L.A., up 2-1, had beaten them 10 of 11 in a regular year, should have won game, you know, should have won the game four with uh, the home run that Sosha hit, and then, of course, they lost game seven in L.A. A little different here because the Phillies did not have home field, but I think the Phillies, I know they signed Nola, but I think that's going to sting for a long time, Ronnie. When you have a 2 nothing lead, a 3-2 lead, undefeated at home, beat Atlanta for the second year in a row, and essentially can't get back to the World Series, I think there's going to be a little hangover for Philadelphia and a little residue. What's your take on that for the Phils in 2024? You know, that's, that's interesting, Chris, because, uh, you know, during the postseason, all of us, you, I, we look at the teams and you kind of readjust as you go along. After the first week, who looks more primed? And I will tell you that after they got on top of the Arizona Diamondbacks, you could really make a case that no team in recent history has been more primed to walk through the whole thing than the Philadelphia Phillies. Their pitchers were pitching as well, starting pitchers were pitching as well as they've pitched in quite some time. Zach Wheeler now is uh, uh, one of those great postseason pitchers. Their bullpen, which at times had maybe uh, not performed up to their capabilities, was at the best they've ever been. And uh, Harper and the crew uh, were hot. Um, I was as surprised as everyone else uh, when the Diamondbacks were able to get past them. And as far as the sting is concerned, I find Philadelphia a very tough team. Uh, they're a team that's gone through a lot of things in the last couple of years, and they seem always to get through it. So there would be a sting with any team. I think it will be less with the Phillies because of the makeup of that squad.
All right. Is there anything about a pitcher from Japan that a uh, suitor should be a little concerned about as far as uh, Yakamoto is concerned? I bring it up because Sengo had a great year. It took a little while to get adjusted. I mean, is it is this every seventh day a problem that you can't put him in a sort of a normal five man rotation? You got a concern about innings. Is there anything the size of the ball? I know there's a little difference there. Is there anything that a that you would tell somebody privately? You know, listen, I like the kid. He got a chance to be real good, but here's what you got to be a little worried about. If that's the case, what's the what, what would I have to be worried about with Yakamoto compared to say Senga? Let you, me hear. You know, Go usually ahead. the only thing that concerns me with a Japanese pitcher coming over is their age. That's usually the only issue. Sometimes they're not posted till they're 29, 30, or 31 years. Old. This is a 25 year old young man at the top of his game. Uh, he's won three pitching awards over there. He's done everything you can do in that league. So nothing would surprise me in the sense that he won't be great here. The only issue, I think, Chris, is that, you know, when you have a pitcher who just recently came here in Senga one year, you're going to have another Japanese pitcher who's used to pitching once a week. Uh, how are you going to reconcile that with the other three pitchers that are in your rotation? Now, what helps. Almost every uh, staff in the major leagues now has a five or six man pitching staff anyways as far as starters. So um, it really is um, parceled out more uh, than it was at some point. But I, I don't see any downside uh, to this young man. Oh you don't interesting there Soto uh, seems like he might be traded. Uh, you know the Padres had a bad year. He did. He had a good year. I didn't see all the games, so maybe if I looked at the first half of the year where their trend was established, maybe I feel a little differently. But we all know, you know him well, young hitter, knows the plate, knows the strike zone. Not a good outfielder, but, you know, if you hit 350, who cares? <laughs> What's your take on, <laughs> you'd agree with that. What's your take on Soto, Yankee Stadium, the Mets in the mix? How good do you think he still is? Let me hear your thoughts there. Go I ahead. mean, the, the, if, if we're just talking about the Yankees, we're talking about a left-handed young bat uh, that has done some things early in his career uh, that maybe only Ted Williams has done. I mean, those are the numbers that he's put up so far. Um, obviously, something's off in San Diego. I don't know what the answer to that is. They have as many stars as you want on a ball club with Soto and Machado and Bogarts and, and Tatis Jr., uh, but something's not working there. So maybe a mix for San Diego coming off the unfortunate death uh, of their owner. Uh, maybe they'll try to change some things, make a big blockbuster trade. Uh, and one of those trades that will benefit with some younger, more athletic players for the Padres and one of the best left hand hitters in, in, in the game right now. Now, Ronnie, of course, part of our family here for the next three months. It was a wonderful job. Great to have you aboard, Ron. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris.